Hey everybody, welcome to Maker Logic. I'm Tom Darling, and today we're going to tackle a cool little project. So I just redid my shop, and you're going to see a tour of that in another video. But the one area of my shop that needs a little bit of help is my miter saw. So what I want to do is I want to build a miter saw station, but I'm going to do it a little differently than a lot of the other videos we've seen out there because I've got two existing metal rolling cabinets that I absolutely love for tool storage and I want to integrate them into the miter saw station. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the wheels off the cabinets, we're going to build a frame around so that we can actually put those, those metal cabinets inside the miter saw station along with a place for the desk collector and a place for some wood scrap storage and we're also going to put a Craig multi-stop fence on the top of it. So stick around and we'll show you how to do this. Now this is my miter saw station that I use right now, which is, you know, this is a great stand that I got from Lowe's. It's a cobalt stand. I've been using it for quite a while now. Works really well. However, it's not that accurate takes up a lot of space with the legs and I usually keep my my scrap bins underneath it but um, I need something that's just gonna fit better in this garage now here's the pile of wood that I'm actually going to use to build this station from we've reclaimed this from a big five foot by four foot table that I had here in the garage um, there's several two by fours in here I've got some extra two by sixes that I'm going to use um, for cross members to support the cabinets, which you'll see later. Uh, we may or may not use that uh, particle board back there on anything, maybe the floor inside the cabinet. Um, and then of course I've got a couple extra two by fours, the two 10 foot two by fours to run the runners across the bottom. Um, all I bought for this project so far was two, two, by, two 10 foot two by fours, a sheet of four by eight maple plywood because I just didn't have enough left from the last job and a 4x8 sheet of sanded fir plywood that I'll use for the sides, the back, etc. of the station. Since it's uh, workshop furniture, we don't have to go overboard on wood. Um, I definitely want the top to be nice and, and really straight and flat, so we're using maple for that. So I started out by using SketchUp to go ahead and lay out my cabinets and the frame. I also laid out all the flat pieces I needed to cut out of my full sheet of plywood on the floor, got an idea, that way I could figure out what we needed to do. So I run my three quarter inch, cut it down for the boxes, and then get to work cutting all of our two by fours and two by sixes to length for the frame. Now I use pocket holes to put together the base of the frame all the way down. This is what the cabinets are going to sit on and will become the base for the entire miter cabinet. Then we'll get the top frames for each of the two sides that go above the cabinets. Now is the tricky part, pre-drilling and putting in the screws that will hold the sides of the cabinet. So once I get all these legs attached, this is for the, from the bottom to the sides, we'll flip it over and then we'll take the wheels off of the existing cabinets that I used from the garage and we'll put the wheels on the entire bottom of this new frame. A little dark outside, we'll roll it inside and we'll put some cabinets in it and see how it looks. Now, as you can see, I've got the cabinets sitting in on each end where they're going to be placed. I haven't formally attached them at this point, but I get a good idea of what they're going to look like. Now, I'm going to leave these handles on them because the handles are actually going to help me move the table around. So we'll get the tops of the frames attached down. And I'm pre-drilling everything. Now we'll take some of that used particle board that I had and we'll go ahead and put a bottom in it.
We're going to close up the sides on each side of the box that's going to hold the shop vac dust collector. And then we'll go ahead and put sides inside where the wood storage is going to go. And all I'm using here is a scrap left over from the plywood that I've already cut and scrap left over from that big table that I disassembled that I showed you all in the beginning of the video. Now we're going to locate where the saw is going to sit. So I'm taking a dimension directly off the saw to locate where the top of the table that's going to hold the saw is here in the middle. So we'll put a brace up, get it lined up, and screw it in, and do that on both sides. And then after I get these up, I'm going to put a 4x4 across the front and the back that'll hold the platform right there, that'll hold the saw up. Then we'll go ahead and attach that top. And as soon as we get screws and everything attached, we're going to bring the saw over and then we're going to level the saw with where the top's going to go. Now I'm making sure here that I can swing the saw all the way around on both sides and have clearance. And we're going to get it nice and straight and level. Now if you notice this saw is like a lot of other saws, it has a very deep back to it which is going to become an issue for me later when I put my top cabinets on later on. But we want to make sure we have clearance for the miter to slide both directions. And there I've got it. Now I'm going to take a little piece of plywood just to hold my level on to see how far off the saw is from where the finished top depth is going to be. And it looks like it's just a little bit of a touch. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually unscrewing the screws that attach the saw to the top and I'm going to use a washer, a flat washer, just to shim up just enough so that I've got it sitting right where I need to be. Now that we've got it attached, we're good to go. And it sits nicely centered. There's plenty of room to swing back and forth. And now all we've got to do is get this plywood sheet here ripped down to put the tops on each of the side boxes. You definitely want to use a high tooth saw when you're cutting plywood. It makes a much smoother cut. So we'll get that lined up with the top. And then after I get it lined up, I'm going to take my brad nailer and I'm just going to tack it into place so it doesn't move. And we'll do that on both sides. And then after we get it tacked into place, then we'll go ahead and screw it down. Now what I'm doing is I'm chamfering this corner right here so that the saw, when I turn it for a miter cut, can clear. Now I am going to put face frames on this cabinet all the way around and the face frame will also be at a 45 degree angle there so we have clearance for that saw when we're cutting a 45 degree miter. So we'll get our pre-drill done all the way around and then we'll put our screws in and I'm attaching screws directly on top of the framing below. That way this top won't go anywhere. Now I'm using a pretty nice maple plywood here. It's probably the most expensive piece of wood in the entire build. It's about $55 for a 4 by 8 sheet of half inch, but it works great. Now I'm putting glue on our stop. This is going to be our miter track, the AccuTrack system that I'm using from Craig. I'm just using two 3 quarter inch MDF pieces that are glued and screwed on a 90 degree angle to make a nice rigid fence. And I'm making the whole length here and then as soon as we have all the screws installed I'm going to take clamps off, take it over to the table saw and cut each side the length. And then we'll set it in place. Once I have these kind of roughly set in place I'll take my level across the fence, make sure we get the new fence leveled out then we'll pre-drill and screw it into the top all the way down on both sides. And now we're ready to start working on the Craig AccuTrack system. Now you'll have to pre-drill the back of the track. What I didn't show in the video here is I did cut all these to length. 
And then once we have pre-drilled our holes, I'll go ahead and put a couple screws to set it onto my, my fence. And once we get it all lined up, I will also take um, my drill bit to make sure I countersink a little bit into the aluminum and then finish putting screws in all the way down. We'll do that on the other side as well. Now this system comes in four four foot pieces, but as you can see, depending on where you set your saw, you might have to cut it. So now we got it in. We put the peel and stick measuring tape on there as well on both sides. And then both of my stops, the movable stop and then the permanent stop are on there and this is how it looks. It really wasn't that hard to put together. It is a little pricey, but it's really wonderful. So here's where we are now, pretty much finished with the face frames on it, except this is what I want it to be finished. So I've built these cabinets, which I don't show you the how-to process, but it's just a simple box and face frame with extra plywood that I had on simple hinges that we robbed from a previous remodel. Got all my Craig jigs stored in this particular cabinet to the left. Then I've got another cabinet here uh, to the right of that one, to the left of the saw where I have my drills and I've got uh, all my power for my batteries in that cabinet. It makes it really easy to store. So we'll go over to the far right here and in this cabinet. I'm keeping my routers, my, uh, my planers, and all my sanding stuff is on the other side. You see that little black thing there? That's, that's a piece of uh, rubber. It covers up two rectangular holes in the shroud back here, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Here's the Craig stop. Notice that I did lift the back cabinets up about four inches. That way I'd have room to get the stops onto the track, and then there's some you know, room to swing that back as well. Now inside the shroud, the shroud is definitely deep because of the back of the saw. And I've got dust collection in there for the saw itself and then a nice collector for the big one down at the bottom for sawdust. Well, it's done and we wrap up another video here at Maker Logic. We're so glad that you chose to join us. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any comments or would like any information about how I built this thing uh, and want to see more videos like this, please let us know in the comments. Keep tuning in because we've got some more videos coming, some really cool things going on this summer in the shop. Until then, we'll see you soon.